Hi, I'm Greg Frick with HFO Investment Real Estate, and today I'm sitting down with Dr. Jerry Milner, Director of the PSU Center for Real Estate. Can you tell us a little bit about the Center for Real Estate and how it started and what its mission? I started the real estate program uh, back in 2002. At that time, I was a professor in the School of Urban Studies and Planning, and we had, we'd initially thought of it, the program as something of an add-on to a planning program. Right. I'd taught. Uh, planning students for about 10 years, teaching them about economics, and wanted to make sure that they understood a little bit more about finance and the real estate industry, which planning students are involved in regulating. Uh, so we started designing a graduate program. We interviewed people in the various sectors of the real estate industry, got the sense that most of them had bachelor's degrees, and decided that it would probably be better to pitch it at a graduate level. And uh, we designed it as an evening program, courses taught. Um, mostly 4 to 6.30, 6.40 to 9.20 in the evening. And uh, since then, it's sort of taken, uh, taken off on its own. Uh, from 2000 to 2007, uh, we've had very, very rapid growth in that program, and a lot of people are just, were just doing it just for the graduate certificate alone. Right, right. And then I just heard news about uh, the new master's degree program that just came out. Yeah, I mean, that, that really is built up on the success of the graduate certificate program. Uh, a lot of the students who had completed the grad certificate wanted to, to stick around for additional coursework and felt that something targeted strictly to the industry okay. would make a lot of sense. So uh, the sequence was in 2004, uh, we decided to uh, design the center. So the center was created in 2004. We made a decision a couple years ago to develop a, a strong partnership with the School of Business. So the new master's degree in real estate development will be uh, within the School of Business, but partnered or, and jointly shared with the School of Urban Studies and Planning. And uh, that program will begin next fall. So we'll have, uh, we're currently uh, recruiting students for the program, and we're just at the end of our pr process right now to recruit two faculty members who will be starting at Portland State. Uh, f starting next fall. We're very excited about so it'll that. It'll be the fall of 2011 when we'll actually start? That's right. Right, okay. And the certificate program still in place? It runs together? Yeah, the feeling, the feeling that we've had is, is that they sort of meet different pools. So you'll always have some students who want to get kind of a full two-year education that a master's degree represents, and that'll include a lot of additional training with respect to market analysis, with respect to urban planning, with respect to sustainability, neighborhoods, demography. Uh, but there'll be another group of students um, who may be current professionals in the industry who want to get a little bit of extra training, uh, but maybe not ready for a two-year master's okay. degree. So kind of what is the demographics that you've seen in the past, and what do you expect moving forward regarding this, people taking these classes, both certificate and the master's program? The, the median age that we've seen for our students in the grad program uh, is, is 30, but that's 30 with a lot, lot of tails on both ends. Right. Uh, every year we always have a couple students who finish their liberal arts degree at age 22 and decide they need something a bit more practical than what they just got, so they um, often don't have a lot of experience. But most of the students have, I would say, three or four years worth of work experience within the industry, uh, some at, really at a min middle manager or senior level. And uh, what's exciting as an instructor with that kind of a program is when you're t talking about a subject or a project, you'll often have somebody in the back of the room who knows something about that project. Right. Uh, so if I'm struggling through a lecture on mortgages, um, I might have, you know, Patrick in the back of the room who's been a mortgage broker who can tell me about what the rates are today and what kind of programs are, are available today. And what's kind of the numbers of, when you say the master's program, how many students are you looking for 2011? Well, we, we've been graduating about 20 students a year with our certificate program, and, uh, and that's been true for at least the last six years. And uh, so I think a lot of those students are going to be applying to the, to the master's program. So we'll have some which will be more experienced students and some which will be brand new to the program. And uh, our target is something in the 20 to 35 range. Okay. Um, our initial planning was saying we'd get about 20 students next fall. On the other hand, with this backlog of students who've already done the certificate program, we're thinking we may be closer to that 35 number. We probably won't go beyond 35 simply because that means we'd have to offer more classes right. uh, for things we, which we would normally offer once a year. Okay. So for our clientele, which is typically apartment owners or investors looking to get in apartments, 
I mean, I'm, I know I'm familiar with your quarterly report that right. Portland State puts out. Can you tell us a little bit about that and maybe highlight the apartment section of that report and some of the things and how you come up with that information, who's putting it together, and you know, eventually how do you know, people get a hold of it? We, we've had really nice support from uh, two groups, the Oregon Association of Realtors and RMLS, the local multiple listing service, to put that report together. And we hire two students each year uh, who focus either on the residential side of the report or the commercial side of the report. On the residential side, we have them do original data research using the RMLS database. Um, and we've done some things to work with RMLS to improve that database so that the numbers that are coming out are more accurate and more comparable to national numbers. And then on the uh, commercial side, and that would include the apartment side for right. us, we try to do basically a meta survey. And by that, what I mean is we try to gather all the information that the various brokerage houses put together and try to come up with um, a, a survey of surveys, as it were, describing what's going on. Now, as you know, in the, in the apartment market, uh, things are probably the most prosperous part of the industry right yes. now. Uh, vacancy rates are quite low. Uh, people have been scared off from home ownership. Uh, there's a fair amount of doubling up going on, and we think there's a lot of pent-up demand, both, both for, for, for home ownership, but as well as for the rental market. Uh, and then finally, there hasn't been much product built in the no, last couple of years. No, and we don't see that changing for the next couple of years at least. So yeah. it, with, with very little in the pipeline, I think you've got to feel that the apartment market uh, is going to continue to be a great place to invest in. No, we would definitely agree. Like I said, I think uh, we've been the, kind of the shining star of the commercial real estate arena weathered the storm the best, and then looking forward with demographics, lack of new construction, uh, things look very good for apartment operations and from an investing standpoint as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing, and now you also, did you guys get into finance at all in this program? Is it right. kind of cover the whole from appraisals, financing, developing? I think it's easiest to, to describe it in kind of two stages. The certificate program was built around uh, a coursework that was uh, focused on real estate finance, on a case study sequence which we developed, and then a housing economics course and various electives. From that, that's really the core of our real estate master's degree, but what we've added to it is market analysis, project design, sustainability, neighbor, neighborhoods, demography, uh, real estate law, and in many cases what we've done essentially is to take courses which were electives and then make them mandatory within the master's degree program. But we think that uh, our strength as a market uh, is, is really in thinking about the development process in trying to help understand uh, public and private partnerships. Right. We have many examples of developers in this community who are exporting that talent uh, to places like Utah, Arizona, Southern California. Uh, we think that's really our, our niche as a real estate community here in Portland. Okay. And are a majority of the students local or are you getting them from all over the West or what's? At this point, with a certificate program, it's all local. I okay. mean, essentially all local. Nobody's going to move across the country for a certificate program. But we believe that the master's degree will attract students from out of region. Uh, the School of Business has a recruiter who goes to Asia uh, to recruit students. And uh, this is now the fifth master's degree in her portfolio. And she said that the real estate master's degree has gotten a lot of resonance. Okay. We'd like that to be true because we know that economic growth is going to be very strong in Asia. And we think that adding you know, a few of those students, not a huge number, right. uh, could be quite attractive both for the students themselves, but also the fellow students in the classroom who will have a contact in Shanghai or Beijing or wherever. Well, I know from our standpoint, we just hired a researcher who was in your certificate program and been very happy with you know, the amount of education they have and kind of the experience coming out. It's, uh, you know, I think it's done very well for the real estate Great. Uh, community. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the conferences sure. you guys have annually? We've been doing a conference now. This will be our sixth year. It funds most of the center's operations. Um, we have sponsorships to that. Uh, you can buy tables. You can buy individual seats. It's coming up on May 17th. We have two speakers, uh, Chris Lee from uh, his own firm, CEL Associates, uh, and then Mark Vintner with Wells Fargo, who's an economist. And the intent is to try to bring a new speaker to Portland, somebody who people haven't seen very much of, somebody who will give both a national perspective but also give information focusing on the local community. And the focus this year is really on the possibilities for the upcoming year, what are, you know, the range of opportunities and possibilities that right. the market offers for the upcoming year. Oh, interesting. And then just for, curious kind of your perspective and you know, being involved in the real estate locally, kind of what do you see? 2011, 2012, and I, I know the sentiment is that we're through the worst of it, uh, but just curious kind of what, you know, what's your perspective looking forward? 
Well, you know, we used to tell a story a couple years ago that Portland was immune. <laughs> Uh, the housing bubble wouldn't hit Portland, <laughs> right. and um, you know, I guess you know some some people in the real estate community uh, came to believe that. Um, I, I, we've got to work off a fair amount of inventory. I think everybody knows that. And uh, on the other hand, I think we have a lot of good things going for us uh, from an investor's point of view. We're a growth a growth constrained development market, which means that it's relatively difficult for competition to get into that market and develop a new product. Um, I see us as again as a real estate community as as one that kind of exports our talent to the rest of, to the rest of the country, um, and, and again I think our physical product is something that's worth investing in uh, because often it has really nice attributes and 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 has this growth growth constrained characteristic. Right, which is we've seen too with the urban growth boundary and just the uh, the cost of getting in for new development. I think is going to put a strain on new development. We'll see for the next couple of years, especially on the multifamily side. Uh, which is going to help the bin up demand and increase rents. So, from an investor standpoint, I, as we've talked about, it's the shining star of you know the commercial real estate. I mean, I think I mean I think there are issues for Oregon to face, and I've yeah. written about some of these things with respect to growth management. And I think that you know there are some real costs associated with it. I don't think we're going to be the fastest growing metropolitan area in the West by any means. And I think our our planning laws, at least as they're currently um, in place, you know, almost dictate that. But that's a choice we're making. Well, that's something we've always said to our clients as well: is we're not a phoenix, which is a boom that's and right. bust. We're more of a steady, and it's uh, you know kind of which ways, which way do you want to race? Do you want to be the rabbit or the hare? And so <laughs> we, you know, we all, we all know who, or the turtle and the hare. We all know who won that race. So yeah, definitely. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the uh, program? Or well, I, I mean, I think that you know we're we're uh, you know developing a program that really fits the community's needs. Um, and I think that uh, students who are interested in applying should give us a contact uh, at www.realestate.pdx.edu, and I'd be happy to talk to them about the program. Great. Well, thank you again. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Miller for coming in and talking to us again. Feel free to learn more about our firm by visiting our website or calling us directly. Thank you.